Okay, so my name is Hannah Khan, and I am a student support specialist with the Ally Center here at LBC. Um, I also work as a professor as well. And um, tonight we're gonna be going over rhythms of rest to avoid burnout. Um, and so I just kind of want to set the stage for tonight. I want this to be just a comfortable conversational atmosphere. Feel free to just raise your hand and interject if you have any questions um, throughout the night and um, feel free to keep your cameras on because I think that that creates like, a nice sense of community when we can see each other. Um, and um, just a little caveat before we jump in. So because burnout is a, an official medical condition, I just want to say from the, the get-go that I'm not um, a medical professional. I'm not a mental health professional. Um, I'm just a college tutor and professor who um, has advice to share about rest and ways to succeed as a student. So if you have um, serious questions about burnout as a medical condition, please contact your um, health care provider. Um, but without further ado, I will jump in and um, pray for us tonight. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you that we have this opportunity to gather tonight. I thank you, Lord, for um, your word and your truth and your love for us. I thank you that you are here with us. I thank you, Lord, for the rest that you um, give to us. I thank you, Lord, that you created us for rest, that you modeled rest for us. And I just pray, Lord, that we would... Um, practice that in our lives, Lord, that we would prioritize it, that we would make it a priority in our um, weekly and day-to-day um, -day life, that rest would just be um, such a, a common habit, Lord. And I just thank you for this time that we get together tonight. We give it to you and we just pray that it would be glorifying to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so agenda. We have a lot of things to go over tonight. So we're going to be defining our terms. We're going to be talking about some common misconceptions about rest. Um, we're going to be defining what is rest? Why do we rest? What is burnout? What is capacity? What is a rhythm of rest? How we rest? Practical tools. Um, as you can tell, we're just kind of doing, going through a lot of questions and questions and answering and um, going through and figuring out like, how can we make this um, seemingly abstract concept, more practical and concrete in our lives, because sometimes rest can seem like just this out of reached, this out of reach, fluffy concept, but we want to actually make it practical for our day to day life. So, so to preface, um, I kind of want to take this opportunity to reframe the way we think about rest. So I think a lot of times we um, think of rest as something that's expensive, something that's exclusive, something that is solely for, you know, vacations in the Bahamas. But the reality is that rest is actually so much more practical and tangible and accessible than that. Though, you know, nice elaborate vacations are great and fun and they have their place. They're not um, really practical for everyone in terms of just day-to-day -day life. We don't want to be living for that one vacation. We want to be living in a way that we are being constantly renewed day by day. Um, so I think something that's so important is that it really does start with surrender because we as believers know that true rest is from the Lord and we can have all of the life hacks and tools and TED Talks. Um, but if we're not really firmly rooted in Christ, clinging to scripture for our identity, um, looking to God for meaning and purpose, joy and delight, nothing is going to really truly satisfy us. We can get great sleep. We can have great balance in terms of our exercise routine and meal prep. Um, but we really need to have the foundation set of God as our foundation. So that's just something that's really crucial to establish. Um, and I think what's interesting is as I've been doing a lot of research for this um, workshop tonight, I've been watching a lot of different TED Talks, reading articles, looking at New York Times bestselling authors, and so many of them point out that humanity longs for purpose and identity and um, a sense of belonging and um, approval, but they often point to human systems to provide what only God can. So I think it's just important that we as believers are thinking about that and um, really looking to God to satisfy our ultimate desires. Um, I kind of like to think of it, it's, it might be a little cheesy, but I kind of think of a, of um, like a pie, like God's not just a slice of our pie. He has to be like the whole foundation, the whole pie crust that holds our life together. Um, so I say all that to say, we're absolutely going to be talking about different like time management, routines, making plans. Um, 
But all of that really is just a chasing after the wind if God isn't our foundation. So we can't life hack our way into the kingdom. We can't earn our righteousness from having a perfect schedule. Um, as author um, Jess Connolly says, we as believers work from a place of God's approval, not for God's approval. So that is something to rest in. And really, it's just a great truth to hold on to. So, oh, and then last but not least, um, resources are tools, which seems very self-explanatory. But I think it's just we have to take advantage of the resources that are available to us and use them <clears> to our advantage because um, in order to maximize a resource's potential, like we can know about something, but we actually have to use it in order for it to be um, effective in our lives. So just kind of thinking about those things as a foundation moving into this, really taking advantage of the resources that are available to us. And there are many. So let's talk about some common misconceptions about rest. So we often think of rest as something that is expensive, exclusive, maybe reserved for the wealthy and well-off. We often think of elaborate trips. Um, and these are not bad things in and of themselves, but they're not realistic for many people. So um, for rest to truly be sustaining and life-changing, we want it to be a regular practice in our lives, not just a once a year thing, even though yearly vacations are wonderful and great and enjoyable. Um, we want to remember that we are human beings, not human doings, that our worth does not come from what we do, what we produce, um, but in our identity as being made in the image of God, God loving us, we are his creation. I also want to note that rest is not just a complete escape from life. So I think so many times people feel like, um, you know, just mindless scrolling on their phone or binge watching a certain show is is rest. When really that's not truly life-giving. That's not truly um, a way of renewing and participating in, in something that's, you know, recreation in, in the sense of the word of being renewed and um, not necessarily recreated, but refreshed. Um, so not to say that watching TV or movies is bad. It all has its place, but we really, we want to be very intentional with our rest and actually um, mindfully participating in things like that, um, that give us a sense of uh, just appreciating truth and beauty and goodness, the way God designed us to appreciate it. So that might be through um, going into nature on a hike, reading a great book, um, painting, creating music, listening to music. There's so many different ways to enjoy the beauty that God created. Um, and that's not to say that films aren't beautiful and don't challenge us to think about different things. They can be, and they are, but we don't want watching TV to be the only thing that we're doing when we think of rest. Number three, another uh, common misconception about rest is that rest automatically occurs if I'm not actively working. Um, and that is not the case. So just because you're not at your desk, at your job, that doesn't mean that you're actually participating in rest. Because I think that all of us have um, experienced uh, dwindling or, you know, or wasting time just scrolling on phones or just doing something that's just like, wow, I just wasted like two hours and I could have been doing something way better with my time and I feel terrible. And so it's like, just because you're not actively working doesn't mean that you're actively resting, um, which is hard because we don't want to think of rest as something that it's like, oh, it's another thing I have to do because it's, it's not, it's something to be intentional about and plan for, but it's supposed to be life-giving and renewing um yeah and another thing that i have in my notes is just um you know striving striving for a sense of worth and identity comes in many forms it's not just in trying to find identity in what we do um we also just we can often uh try to find significance in many other things that are outside of of God's plan of just like feeling seen and validated through social media or different things like that um, when we really should be living in community and resting in community with other people who really love us and we care about them as well. Okay. And then something, a common thread that we're going to see throughout um, the workshop tonight is part of what being made in the image of God means is that we enjoy being creative. And so um, in Genesis one, we see that God is, is awesome and powerful and creates all things through 
through speaking existence into existence. Um, and in today's day and age, especially in, a, in American culture, particularly, we often think of um, things in terms of their utility or their usefulness. So we really disregard the pursuit of beauty or the appreciating nature or art or good literature. It's so easy to just kind of throw those things out as like, oh, that's just, you know, that's just a subject you study in school, or that's just something, you know, only kids use coloring books where it's like, actually, we could all probably really benefit from picking up, you know, a pack of crayons and coloring every now and then, because it's just so good for us to be appreciating beauty and art and the good things that God has given us to enjoy. So, um, we don't want to frame things only in terms of the question, like what purpose does this serve and how does this help me achieve the next item on my list? Because oftentimes that might be the wrong question. Um, not everything has to be quote unquote useful to be valuable. So without further ado, what is rest? So rest is intentional, it's replenishing and it's life-giving. So um, I did a little bit of a word study on the word recreation. So like the etymology, if you will. Um, and the Latin root of um, recreer means to create again, but it also means to create a new or to refresh. So when we think about recreational activities of um, going to the gym and getting outside and painting or um, playing an instrument or singing or listening to music, there's so many things that are so renewing and refreshing. Um, it's powerful and it has the power to refresh and restore. And we as, as human beings are designed to rest. Um, and we also, as I said earlier, we can't allow the culture around us to define rest. Um, you know, just complete numb entertainment is not really rest. Um, it doesn't mean that entertainment is bad, but it's probably usually not inherently actively restful. Um, so first we need rest for our bodies. We need physical rest. We are called to steward our bodies. Um, as believers, we are temples of the Holy Spirit. Um, and physical rest doesn't necessarily mean stillness. So unfortunately, also in American society, we live a pretty sedentary lifestyle. Most people's jobs are, re are very still. We're at a desk all day. Um, so it can also, so physical rest can be restorative movement. So taking a walk, going on a run, doing stretches, doing doing things that help um, relax your body, things that you can just, you know, get out in nature and breathe fresh air. All of these things are so helpful to, um, to our health, to our wellness. Um, just exercise is just really great. Uh, and then in terms of our hearts, the emotional rest that we, that we all need. Um, author Jess Connolly in her book, Tired of Being Tired, writes that quote, Ignoring our emotions does not give us energy. It actually makes us feel much heavier. We'll repeat what we don't repair. We'll carry what we don't confront, end quote. Meaning that we should pay attention to our emotions, not let them rule over us. Rather, Connolly suggests that we should see them as messengers that tell us a bit of what we are processing and how we are perceiving the world. So we don't let our emotions dictate our lives, dictate our attitudes. But if we're experiencing a certain emotion or having a certain feeling, we should use that as a good gauge of like, okay, where am I at? What am I feeling about this thing? And how can I um, feel this emotion and not just ignore it? And what might it be telling me about, you know, things I need to pray about, like, um, and different things like that. So just not ignoring um, emotions, but also not being ruled by them. And um, just really you know, taking time to journal, taking time to process the things that we're going through is, is really, is really helpful when it comes to emotional rest. And then um, lastly, mental rest. So our brains are bombarded with information through our phone, social media, the 24 hour news cycle, advertisements, you name it, your brain is processing it. So while our brains are incredible, we must take care of them. So, um, I'd really encourage you to try to have certain portions of your week that are screen free, if possible, um, where you can put away your phone and intentionally do activities that don't require screens. Um, I'd also encourage you to pay attention to what overwhelms you. So if you feel anxious after scrolling on social media, curb your social media intake or even do some sort of social media fast for a period of time just to um, 
really give yourself a break from all of that information um, and the way it just stimulates your brain in, in such a really intense way. Um, we're not designed or meant to know so much about so many people's lives, uh, really in so many ways, it's it's very exhausting and unsustainable in the long run to know so much about so many people and oftentimes complete strangers too. Um, so that is different forms of uh, physical, emotional, and mental rest. Any questions so far? I know we've kind of already covered a lot of info in just 20 minutes. Any questions or anything? Okay. All right, we can keep on rolling. Okay, so now we ask the question, why do we rest? So um, God models it for us in Genesis 2, 1 through 3, uh, which says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all of his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Um, so I saw, I listened to a podcast that was really interesting. Um, pastor John Mark Comer was talking about how, because Adam and Eve were created on the sixth day, that they literally began their lives with the experience of resting in perfect communion with God, that they like, that like human existence began in a state of rest. And I was, wow, I had never thought about it in that way. Um, and just how beautiful it was, it is that God created the universe established the Sabbath, like created humanity and established the Sabbath and that like we should be living from a place of rest. Um, yeah. So just really, really awesome to see that. Um, and then even in um, Psalm 127 two, the psalmist writes, it is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil for he gives to his beloved sleep. Um, and I think, you know, uh, I'd be the first one to admit that there's just times where I, you know, stay up late because I want to finish this project or finish this thing. And um, it's just so easy to feel like everything is is on our shoulders, that we have to prove ourselves through our work, um, you know, prove ourselves to those around us and, uh, you know, participate in anxious toil when God wants to give his beloved sleep and that rest and sleep are so important to our overall well-being. Um, and then I uh, found this quote during my research, we were made to work from a place of rest, not for our rest. So we're not meant to be earning our Sabbath rest, um, but we get to work from a place of that rest. So humanity began in rest and that is that, um, that rest leads us to be fulfilled in our work because we're not just constantly striving and toiling. So I thought that was, that was really great. Um, another point that I wanted to make is um, I, during my research, I um, looked at a video from pastor Herschel York and he talked about how um, he was talking about how to prevent burnout in ministry. And he was sharing that, um, what God has called you to do is not going to inherently be in conflict with anything else that he's called you to do. So if he's called you to be a husband, father, and pastor, though all of those things are, you know, demand on your time and, you know, they require certain things of you, they're not going to inherently be in conflict because God has called you to do those things. And so he's going to give you the ability to make all of those responsibilities work, um, and so all that, though they all take time, they're not inherently in conflict, uh, which I thought was a really great point. Um, he also made the point that oftentimes when we are overwhelmed, we'll seek comfort in things that can't really truly provide comfort. And the enemy um, often uses these as tools for sin and distraction when we're, you know, tired and overwhelmed and, you know, just want to want some retail therapy to just, you know, go and shop or go do whatever to um, find comfort, but it's, it's not really going to actually comfort us in the long term, even if it just provides a temporary um, moment of satisfaction, it will ultimately leave us more empty than we were before. Um, yeah. Okay. Any other questions about kind of like the why? Any any questions generated from this slide? Okay, great. 
So this quote I thought was really great for framing our view of Sabbath. So from um, Pastor Rich Viadas um, says that we keep Sabbath not because it makes us more productive at work. We keep it to resist the idol of productivity. We are more than what we produce, um, which is just such a good reminder because I think all of us can um, can stray and tend to find our identity in our resumes and our accomplishments and our degrees on the wall. Um, but really, Sabbath is a is a weekly reminder of we are not what we do. Um, and continue on another um, uh, rich quote. Um, he wrote five truths about Sabbath. So Sabbath is not a reward for hard work. Sabbath is a reminder that our work will remain incomplete. Sabbath is a day to move us from production to presence. Sabbath reminds us that we are not God and Sabbath points us to the deeper rest we need that's found in Christ. Um, so I thought those were just like really helpful, um, just pieces of information to frame our understanding of Sabbath that like, you know, we, so often we kind of tell ourselves like, well, I'll rest when I complete X, Y, and Z, or uh, oh, let me just do one more thing and then I'll rest or one more thing. But it's like, the work will never fully be complete. And that's, and it's just a reminder that we just need to stop and rest, reflect, be in the presence of God and his people, and just remember like the central truths about like, our existence and not just find our identity in our work, which is really, really difficult, especially in our um, current society where, you know, the first question that someone asks you when they meet you is oftentimes like, what do you do? Like we so often tie our identity to what we do, what we do, but it's actually who we are being made in the image of God. God's love for us um, is where we should really be finding the core of our identity. So now moving into what is burnout. So if we're trying to establish these rhythms of rest to avoid burning out, what, it, what is burnout technically? So burnout is a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. Um, oftentimes people talk about it in terms of like an occupational burnout, but burnout can also just happen in life in general too. Um, author of the book, The Burnout Gamble, Hamza Khan says that burnout occurs when you're continuously far beyond your comfort zone. So if you're constantly working over your capacity for a long stretch of time, then burnout is, is pretty inevitable. Um, but the tough thing is burnout is a slow process and it doesn't happen all at once and there are stages. And so a lot of times people don't even necessarily realize they're in it until they're very deep in it because people just continue working harder and harder and harder. And then the, the progression just begins. So, um, Herbert Freudenberger and Gail North um, theorized the 12 stages of burnout. And so this was a really helpful um, infographic on those stages. So in stage one, um, people may feel that there's a strong need to prove themselves. So then that leads them to work harder and harder to achieve that. Um, that individual will often begin to de neglect their own needs um, more and more in order to get the work done. And then they are conflicted and blame others for the situation. They're getting more tired, starting to blame others, becoming irritable. They change their values to focus on work more. So they might start spending less time with loved ones, um, drawing back from, from activities they used to really love to do. They'll deny problems that arise due to work stress. They'll withdraw. Um, their, their behavior changes, which upsets their loved ones, um, oftentimes at in the later stages, there's a depersonalization where uh, the individual doesn't even feel like themselves anymore. They'll feel empty and numb. Um, many people even turn to uh, substance abuse to kind of uh, quell the, the, the pain that they're feeling. Um, people will feel depressed, lost, completely exhausted. And then finally, there's just the complete um, mental and physical collapse of, of burnout. So these are kind of the stages that a lot of um, professionals point to as the progression of burnout. So if we're thinking about ways to prevent burnout and to not let ourselves progress in those stages of burnout, we kind of want to think about, well, what is our capacity? What are we able to do? What are we able to take on um, 
So um, Melanie Sodka theorized um, how addiction to distraction often erodes our capacity and capacity is the ability to say yes to something wholeheartedly while also knowing that means saying no to something else. So every yes is a no to something else because when we say yes to something, it takes our time, our bandwidth, our, our emotional capacity away from doing something else. And so um, the goal is to get to a place where we can truly say yes to our priorities and kindly decline those things that are not part of our priorities. So um, she goes through some of the different stages of balancing out capacity. So stage one, someone might be very indulgent and in saying yes to everything, wanting to be involved and um, then being overcommitted. And that often leads to stage two, which is being fatigued because they're exhausted from overcommitting. Um, stage three is kind of that recovery where there's like a reservation about, you know, they're hesitant to commit now because they're trying to balance things out. But then she, um, Melanie Sodka, um, encourages people to be in the maximized capacity stage where um, they can say yes with discernment and no without guilt. So yes with discernment and say no without guilt. So they really can choose their priorities that are aligned with their values and say no to things that are not um, a part of those values. Um, so she talks about, she used the illustration of capacity elasticity. And so she was kind of thinking about um, like a rubber band. So if you don't have a rubber band stretch, it's just kind of limp, it just kind of hangs there. But if a rubber band is too stretched, it's it risks snapping. So she talked about wanting to find a comfortable tension where the rubber band is being used well, but not overused and not underused. So I thought that was a really helpful illustration. Um, and we want to all take inventory and be able to measure our capacity to make time for things that matter. So different seasons of life are gonna enable us to have, um, you know, maybe more stretch or less stretch depending on our family commitments, depending on our church commitments and just our seasons of life, our health, um, things like that are going to affect our capacity. And we need to be aware of that and um, say yes and no to different opportunities accordingly. Okay, so now what is a rhythm of rest? So a rhythm of rest is a habit of restful practices built into your schedule that allows you to recharge on a consistent basis. Um, and something that I think is so helpful to think about is um, self-care has been kind of a, a buzzword in the last few years. And I think as believers, we want to avoid the two self-care extremes. You know, sometimes people use self-care as a license for complete selfishness of like, this does not serve me, therefore I'm not going to do it. And it's like, okay, well, that's not really having the mind of Christ. But so we don't want to be completely selfish. We also don't want to completely ignore ourselves to the point where we're, you know, not getting enough sleep, not properly nourishing ourselves, um, not taking care of ourselves, not spending time with loved ones. We don't want to be so overcommitted and, um, you know, just totally beyond our capacity, what we just talked about. So we want to have a nice balance of taking care of ourselves while also loving and sacrificing for the sake of others, because that's really what we're called to do. So um, we want to avoid those two self-care extremes and just have a, a healthy view of taking care of ourselves um, and knowing our, our needs and making time for healthy decisions. Um, so we've kind of been talking about um, a few different things when it comes to um, Sabbath. So something that's really important is to try as much as possible to have um, a 24 hour period of rest each week. Now this is obviously extremely countercultural. Um, it's something that I'm personally working on implementing. I, I have not arrived in this area in any way. Um, you know, we can think about, you know, our weeks, our seasons. It doesn't have to necessarily be Sunday. Um, maybe for you, the best time would be, you know, Friday night at 7 p.m. to Saturday night at 7 p.m. And just, you know, playing around with different things to see what works best um, for your schedule, for your season. Um, but really being intentional that when you have that Sabbath rest, making it special, like playing music, um, lighting candles with dinner, having really delicious food, taking delight in God's creation, um, spending time with loved ones, um, really making that a, a special time of, of rest and replenishment and really delighting in the Lord's presence and the things that he's given us to enjoy, like really good food. 
Um, as I said earlier, we really want to be understanding our season. So obviously life is going to look a little bit very different for parents of young children, um, individuals who are caring, who are caretaking for um, a loved one or aging parents, um, you know, people who are both working and going to school, like many LBC students, um, or those who are, you know, maybe starting up a business. There's just different stages of life that require different things of us. And so we want to, we want to take take into account of our season and just plan accordingly and work on implementing a, a Sabbath um, and finding out what works best for us in our given season. And then um, as always, it's just so important to remember that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Sabbath is a gift from the Lord and it shouldn't feel overwhelming or taxing or just one more thing to do, one more thing to figure out. Um, it's really a gift. And so, but it does require intentional planning and a surrender of our idolatry of work, as the quote um, earlier uh, discussed. Um, yeah, we live and work from a place of rest, not to earn our rest. And then something that we'll talk a little bit more about later with the practical tools is um, implementing daily and weekly practices of intentional rest. So this could be something as simple as... Um, having a morning and evening routine in which, you know, maybe in the morning you have your um, scripture reading time and prayer and, you know, you just spend five minutes outside. You just take a quick walk, get some sunshine. Um, and that's just like a restful thing that you do to start your day um, well. And then at the end of the day, maybe you just take five to 10 minutes to journal, journal a prayer and just reflect um, and maybe read a little bit before you go to bed instead of looking at your phone or your computer just to kind of begin to prepare your body to sleep and avoid that screen time on your eyes right before bed. Um, so just different, you know, really small practices can make such a big difference, um, even if it's just five to 10 minutes here or there of just intentional like, okay, instead of scrolling on my phone, I'm going to pick up a book and read that before I go to bed. Things like that, you know, begins with baby steps, but it can really make such a, a big difference. So um, now we move into the really practical considerations. So what is restful for you? How will you rest? Um, many of us are out of touch with what we find to be truly restful. And so something that can be helpful is to think of what you enjoyed doing as a child. So maybe you really enjoyed um, art or playing sports or being outside, just thinking about ways of really um resting. So that's going to look different for different people. Um, that might be reading, writing, journaling, um, cooking. Uh, something that's so important that we talked to, we touched on earlier is really exercising and moving your body in a way that's enjoyable. So God designed our bodies to move and thrive on movement. So um, there's so many different exercises that are, are out there. There's there's pickleball, there's walking, there's running, stretching, um, so many different ways of, of finding an exercise that that suits your um, lifestyle and uh, that can enable you to really just enjoy, um, enjoy exercise and enjoy movement. And then um, I would encourage you all to kind of think of something, you know, just take a minute to think and write down one way that you want to implement emotional um, mental or physical rest into your life. So take take just 30 seconds now to just kind of think of something that we've talked about and, and jot something down of, of something that you personally want to implement um, into your rhythms. Would anyone like to um, share their um, idea for what they would like to implement more into their rhythms? I think that um, I think that exercise, being physical and being active, it it helps serotonin and things in your brain. So um, just being more active, that actually, God nudged me this morning about being active and. Staying physical and that'll help me stay focused on what I need to do. Yeah, 
Great. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Yes. It's so, it's so easy to get out of the habit. And then once we kind of start doing it, it's like, wow, this feels great. And so it's so nice to, um, and, and something else I wanted to mention earlier is that there's also different, like, um, you know, there's adult sports teams where, you know, people get together to just play soccer mm-hmm. or basketball. Um, there's hey, Chris, fitness. Did um, you, um, actually, did you get to uh, the group yesterday? There's, um, there's group fitness classes at different gyms, um, which is really great. And some people really like being able to work out with other people. So that's a great option too. And there's a lot of church, yeah. like softball leagues and different things like that. Uh, that's um, a good idea. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else want to uh, share something that they're wanting to implement more into their routines? Um, <clears throat> I was just thinking, listening to Benny's Southern accent, <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, <clears throat> I'm st- I'm stuck in Minnesota and I'm a Georgia girl. So I was just <laughs> thinking how much I love um, the Bible on audio. It's a mm-hmm. really good way to unwind. And I was thinking, oh, we need to have it in a southern, a southern accent. Benny, there you go. There's your career call. All right. I hear you. <laughs> send, send, send Logos over here and I'll I'll record it for you. Okay. <laughs> I will. I will All do right. that. <laughs> um <clears throat> I have reading and writing and prayer and exercising. And I was thinking coloring book. I would add that to my list. Yeah. yeah. That's actually a good idea. Yeah. Especially yeah, in the winter here in Minnesota mm-hmm. when everything's white and I'm dying for color. <laughs> for um, sure. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. This is actually good. I um, To implement these things into our lives is how to implement them and finding the time to do it. I think uh, it's actually a good thing to think about. So um, just thankful. Thank you for doing this today. Appreciate you. Of course. You. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's been, it's been so helpful for me to prepare for it. I'm like, wow, like this is like this <laughs> for me. I'm like, wow, I really probably need to helping you out at the same time. Huh? It really is. I'm like, wow, this is great that I get to do this for my job. But, but like, I'm just like, wow, like, what like what really is biblical rest like what like what is mm. realistic for adults with busy lives and many responsibilities yeah. um, but like it's so it's so important for us to slow down and appreciate beauty in God's creation and getting outside and like breathing in fresh air and things like that it's just like wow we can be so disconnected from so many of the things that God gave us to really enjoy and find rest and solitude in 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 this world so yeah absolutely thank you for being here thank you yeah yeah great oh great well thank you guys for sharing that's wonderful um when we think what do you, about what do you suggest with yeah. uh just distractions just <laughs> trying to stay focused and then being distracted i mean what can you do there just uh i guess if you're being too distracted i mean um, I guess that's then that's a good time to actually implement this stuff because you know that your brain's overworked. I don't know. I'm trying to trying to think of things to do when you're you're being distracted and what can you do to stay focused on your work? I don't know. Yeah, that's a great question. I think and and I think depending on people's personality, some people might not like this as much but I mean I think like getting like a a timer of some sort um that's like not on your phone that's just like separate that's not electronic and just being able to be like okay for the next 15 minutes I'm going to sit down and read this book (laughs) and I'm just going to set the timer I'm going to put my phone down and like I'm just going to read this book and I think really setting very realistic of like 10 or 15 minutes where it's like okay this is just a sliver of my day but I'm going to like reclaim it and like just intentionally take this time to you know walk walk a lap outside or um just different things like that of like of of identifying like what is really restful for you and then just really fighting to protect it as much as possible and and again you know we we all have to be flexible 
life happens, things come up and, and we obviously have to attend to our responsibilities, but really just trying to start with reasonable steps. Because I think something else that I, I meant to mention earlier is I think so many times people kind of frame rest really unrealistically of like, oh, like we're just gonna, you know, like go up on this mountain for like, you know, a whole day or like, you know, different things. And again, that's great if you have the opportunity to do that. And like, you know, if someone can do that, that's wonderful. But like, that's really not going to be practical for everyone everywhere for most of their lives. So like, how do we like just reframe our schedules and really like establish that discipline to prioritize our priorities because it's so easy to just kind of let another day pass or let another week pass and it's Sunday night again and you're like oh, I'm going into my week and like I didn't do the things I wanted to do um so how can I actively reclaim that and like just taking those baby sets baby steps to do that and I think you know maybe that you know that 15 minutes turns into 20, turns into 25, maybe even a half hour of like, well, I just read two chapters of this book and I feel great, you know? Um, and just like trying to keep that going. Cause I think, I think small building blocks of consistency over time is so much better than just that once a year retreat up the mountain, you know, like actually having it more consistently in your life is going to, I think ultimately do more to change us because we're really we're formed by what we do day in and day out you know we're influenced by like what we go to what like just the habit you know we don't we don't oftentimes think deeply about our habits but it's like when we do just have a spare minute and we just look on our phone like that is forming us in a way whereas like if we have a spare moment and we just like you know, meditate on scripture or work on memorizing a passage or, or different things like that of like really reclaiming that. Um, and again, I'm not, you know, I don't mean to be disparaging of technology or phones because there's, a, you know, a million benefits of technology and they connect us in so many ways, but they also steal our time in really significant ways too. So it's just really important to be using technology intentionally, but then being able to detach um, and just like, be still and know that the Lord is God and just like, you know, meditate on that. And, and yeah, that's yeah. good. So um, if I can, yeah. can I add to that a little bit? Please, um, please. So uh, Benny, I took uh, the workshop on time management. So mm -hmm. I really recommend that. Okay. Um, and also I'm taking um, foundations what am I taking, Hannah? Foundations for academic success. Even though I've been in school since last August, um, they in that class, they teach you more in-depth time management. And I had to chart what I did. I think it was for the whole week. And I realized how much time I was wasting. And it's made mm -hmm. me be more conscious of where I'm spending my time. Um, so they right. give you a lot, a lot of tools and, and the timer was part of those tools as well. That, oh, that helps a lot. So Where, what's recommend. the name of it? Um, the class I'm taking is foundations for academic success. Um, and there's a lot of easy stuff in there if you've been in college already, but there's still a lot of really helpful tools. Mm -hmm. um, All right. And then also look for the Ally Center's workshops. For time management okay yeah, yeah. and if you want to reach out to the ally center um we record our workshops and so you could actually get the zoom recording of that most recent time management workshop if you'd want to um if anyone uh wants to just like watch it and re-watch it um that could be really helpful as well so that resource is available to you as well awesome. great questions thank you thank you all for sharing um thank you any any other questions um on people's minds right now i see the preparing of, and uh plan meals and snacks that's actually good like i didn't think about that that's good <laughs> like prepare um your snacks and your meals for the week and then <laughs> is that is that basically what what you mean or yeah i mean absolutely yeah it's it, it really is because it's 
it's one of those things where it's like it like on yeah like on the slide on paper it seems so simple but then like in the practical day-to-day -day life mm. it's like if we're not prepared that's kind of usually when we make some of our most unhealthy decisions of like and again mm. you know, not demonizing fast food or anything but you know we yeah. really want to be planning nourishing protein filled satiating meals and For we sure. do that by planning it out plan you know making sure we have the right ingredients on hand um preparing our snacks in advance so that then when we need a snack we can just grab it and we don't have to like scramble of like oh what am i gonna have for dinner tonight or like oh what am i you know what am i gonna take to work for lunch um just having that prepared ahead of time is just like so helpful and there's so many resources online like uh, kind of an overwhelming amount of resources online about like meal prep and that you know youtube videos and blogs and um social media uh accounts of just like different meal prep prep so depending on your you know dietary needs or whatever there's there's a lot of different resources out there available um which is really for great sure. it's just kind of a matter of finding what works for you and what you like and um uh, going from there but yeah yeah so so with these practical tools so one of the things that i recommend is having some sort of weekly planning session so whether that's on like a sunday night going into your week or like a monday morning really just taking time and you know, it might only be like 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour of like reflecting on the previous week's schedule and, and looking at like, okay, like what went well, what didn't go well? Um, where did I use my time? Well, where didn't I use my time? Well, and then really identifying the top priorities for the upcoming week. So this can be both like in life and in academics of, okay, like what do I really need to work on this week in terms of my classes? What what a big assignments do I have coming up that I don't want to wait until the last minute to start? Um, you know, and and this can also be like a really good habit to also do um, like if you're married with with your spouse of like okay like just kind of communicating and planning out the logistics for the upcoming week is is super helpful. Um, and then asking yourself the question: Did my actions this past week line up with my priorities? Um, and <laughs> Every time I read that question, I'm just like kind of convicted. I'm like, oh, that's just, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, I think we all struggle to really consistently use our time well, but it's good because his mercies are new every morning and we can, you know, re replan, redirect and, and continue to work towards using our time in a way that is God honoring and also, you know, aligned with with our stage of life, with being students, with being um, employees, with being in ministry, all the different things, um, really just just working and and being diligent with where we're at, while also leaving time for play and board games and puzzles and just, you know, stepping outside and looking at the birds. <laughs> um, and then we talked a little bit about it earlier, but um, I'd, I'd also encourage um, people to create like a morning and evening routine just so there's like a consistency and it can be again at like as I said earlier just like super simple with like getting ready for the day um you know whenever you have your your quiet time like you know maybe ending your time with the Lord by like journaling out a prayer writing out prayer can sometimes can be like a really nice way of like staying very focused in prayer and just really processing through your your feelings in um like a, a tangible way a lot of people really enjoy the the like the physical feeling of writing on, you know, with a, with a pen and paper and just writing out your prayers that can be really helpful. Um, and then maybe in your evening routine, as I mentioned earlier, maybe journaling, maybe reading, um, coloring, different things like that. Just like finding a little pocket of time consistently daily to try to just implement a little bit of rest, um, can just be really great. And that can grow as we talked about earlier. Um, Preparing and planning meals and snacks, as we talked about, just just doing what you can to prepare um, accordingly and um, have your meals prepped and planned as much as possible for the week. And again, this doesn't necessarily have to happen on the weekends. This can just happen whenever is best for your schedule um, and you know when it works for you to go grocery shopping and and planning those things out accordingly. And then. Um, Lastly, but certainly not least, also having boundaries of, we talked about it earlier a little bit, but being able to say no, even if it's a really good opportunity or like 
something you'd be interested in, but maybe saying, I'm sorry, I don't have the capacity for that right now, but please ask me again in the future. You know, like I'd, I'd love to go out to dinner. I'd love to spend time with you, but unfortunately this week I have too much going on, you know, but like being able to be honest with yourself about what you're able to commit to, what you maybe shouldn't commit to at the time and being able to actually turn down those opportunities. Um, because really in a lot of ways, that's also loving others because you don't want to commit to something that you really don't have the bandwidth for and then be so spread thin that you're just like exhausted and irritable and, you know, not very pleasant to be around when that event, you know, comes around. Um, so yeah, so doing what you can to have boundaries and be able to, you know, turn down opportunities when, when you need to, which then opens you up and frees you up to be able to say an enthusiastic yes to different opportunities and things that, um, that, you really want to do. Okay, let's see how we're, okay. Oh, perfect, we have just a few minutes left. Um, so I'm gonna go through just a few time management tools that the Ally Center has. Again, um, definitely strongly would recommend um, getting access to the time management um, workshop that we offered. Um, that's gonna have like a lot more in-depth uh, resources on time management, but just a few really quick practical tools to help you um, take um, take into consideration your season and what's going on in your life. Um, the Ally Center has this resource called a time audit, and it's where you go through and determine, okay, so um, determine what your week looks like in terms of your commitments, your work life, your ministry life, um, and how many hours you have left over to study. Um, so this is just kind of like a general inventory of like, okay, how many hours am I sleeping each night? meals and errands and morning and evening routines and leisure and work and commute and all those things um, and how much time you have left to study. And you could also see like, okay, how much time am I actually spending on true rest each week and how can I prioritize rest as well? And then once you take that um, time audit of like what your week to week looks like, you can fill in what we have on this global ideal week calendar. And this goes from like 6 a.m. to like 11 p.m. or midnight. Um, this is just like a screenshot of the of the resource, but it keeps going. Um, and you can fill in the time blocks of like, okay, when am I at work? When am I at church? When is my family night? And like put in those like foundational building block priorities and then see like, okay, where are my pockets of time where I can plan to study, but also where are the pockets of time where I can plan rest or where I can, you know, have a phone call with, um, you know, that friend that lives across the country or, you know, catching up with a, a loved one. Um, where can I fit in the things that are really important to me that often fall by the wayside because, you know, so often we're not thinking about like, you know, when can I read this week? You know, we're just thinking about like, oh, like, how can I survive? How can I get through all my responsibilities? But the reality for many of us, not all of us, but a lot of us do have more pockets of time than we realize um, if we take inventory and figure out like, okay, you know, Monday afternoons, I have a, a free pocket of time and I am going to um, sign up for an art class and I'm going to take an art class and I'm going to enjoy that. Or I'm just going to take my painting supplies and go to the park and I'm going to spend some time outside and paint or color or read um, or go for a run, different things like that. Um, just really being intentional with, with what your schedule allows and figuring out where you can um, put those, those times of rest in there. Okay, so we went through, um, we defined our terms, we went through some common misconceptions about rest, we talked about what is rest, why do we rest, what is burnout, what is capacity, what is a rhythm of rest, we talked about how you personally will rest, and we went over some practical tools to help facilitate that practice and rhythm of rest. Um, these are my references. 
thank you so much for your time. Um, does anyone have any questions or things they want to talk about? As always, we do have, um, I uh, just in case any of you are not aware, we do offer one-on-one um, -on -one appointments in the Ally Center. So like you can make an appointment and we can actually go through um, time management strategy. We can fill out those resources for you personally and figure out like how you can, um, you know, prioritize your studies, prioritize rest. Um, so that is available to you. And in addition to those academic mentoring appointments, we also have obviously these study groups. And then we also have one-on-one -on -one, um, writing appointments and academic appointments where you can work on your school assignments as well and get um, help and assistance and support with, with those items. So thank you all for being here. Um, does I'm anyone sorry. have any questions? Yes, I'm sorry. I didn't get on when everyone else was talking. Uh, my name is Shana, but I know we only have like two minutes. But I wanted to find out, um, I think the the um, gentleman that was on here, or someone had said if this was being recorded. Is this being recorded? Because I wanted to listen to it again. Sure, yes, absolutely. So yes, it is being recorded. Um, and if I get your... Um, name, I can email you the recording once it's developed. Sometimes Zoom takes like 24 or 36 hours to develop the recording, but once it is finalized, I can um, email it to you. Okay. I can't, did you want my email now? Sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll write that down now. Okay. And then also the time audit, how do I navigate to that online? Yes. So that is on the Ally Center's library guide, our LibGuide page. And um, so if you guys all, if anyone has to go, feel free to take off. I don't wanna, I don't wanna keep anyone longer than they um, need to be, but actually I can show you how to um, get to that. Well, actually thank you, I was trying to- Have a good night. Yes, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Nice to meet you, Karen. Nice to meet you, Benny. Enjoy the sound. Bye. <laughs> Bye, sweetie. Bye. Um, I'm sorry. So you said it, you said it's on the Ally Center webpage. Yes. So the Ally Center has um a library guide that I will pull up, and we have academic resources, and then we also have academic mentoring resources. So, um, on our library guide that can be found um, through the research guides on like the LBC library website. So we have um, like studying tips and academic self-care and time management. And specifically the ones we went over tonight are gonna be found under the global student resources tab. So if you click on that, um, you can find even more resources actually than we had time to go over tonight. There's um, There's the time audit, there's the ideal week calendar. Those are the two resources we looked at, but there's even more on here and also um, further explanations of how to use those other resources. And Okay, and so is the time audit? Yes, yep, that's right here. Okay, and also the time management, you said there's a one-on-one -on -one and I can just schedule for that in the Ally Center. Is that with yes. you? Or yep. Yeah. So, um, so I offer those appointments and then there's also other writing, uh, ally center tutors that also have, um, those appointments available. Okay. So I just look up your name and just, um, request the time eight. Yes. Yep. Or, um, so there's a scheduling link and then if you have any issues, you can also reach out to me by email and I can schedule an appointment for you if you have any issues. Okay. Okay. I'm going to give you my email. Okay, yes, I will take that. Whatever okay, you see. I'm sorry. Okay. It's C as in cat. H as in horse. Okay. I, I as in ice. Mm -hmm. S as in Sam. Yep. The number eight, the number three, the number three, the number seven, and the rest is lbc.edu. And and what was your, your name? Um, was Shana? Yes. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Um, do you have any other questions that I can help you with tonight? Well, actually, I have a I have a lot because um. Bye, Karen. I've, Thank I've, you. I've, uh, what were you saying? 
Oh, I was just saying bye to the other student, but um, feel free to keep going. Sorry about that. Sorry. So yes, I have a son and it's, I've just started school back over again and my courses and stuff, I'm kind of behind because this is my first time in like eight years online, getting familiar with the site and I'm just trying to get, have a schedule that I have, um, which I've been using, but I'm trying to be even more consistent with putting my mm -hmm. my classes in. And then you all were talking about meal prepping. You know, it's been in my mind to meal prep, but I haven't mm -hmm. been doing it. And mm -hmm. so, um, and I need, and I have a mind of knowing how to eat well, but I haven't really been doing that because I don't have a, you know, time management. And then I know you were d discussing about being able to say no so I have friends um, they call me and I'm just like I'm trying to talk to them and I don't, I don't want them to feel like I don't want to talk to them and I have a friend a guy friend and you know he got disturbed at one point I'm just like okay I'm trying to put I'm just trying to make a schedule where I can fit everybody in then do my homework because it's an overload and then you know spread out all my assignments so that it won't be so overwhelming and my teacher requested this class for me so so i'm like i gotta get this in because she says she's rooting for me and i only have a couple more weeks and my grade is kind of low because i've been trying to manage it but it's been kind of difficult for me so sure. yeah Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. Yes. Well, um, the Ally Center has a lot of, of resources and I would be more than happy to meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I will actually just turn off the Zoom recording now and then we can actually set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment now if you have a minute and, and know your schedule for next week. We can um, work on that appointment now if, if you'd like. We can schedule that for next week. Sure. That sounds good. Okay, great. Well, I will just stop the recording now.